Hello friends, I, <laughs> I'm coming at you after one of the worst weeks of my entire life. I had a really unexpected loss in my life and I've just been struggling with that. Um, but I'm really actively trying to lean into my sun energy over my moon energy. And as I was talking about in one of my other videos, even like trying to romanticize our sadness and the dark times in our life because they are inevitable. And so the beginning of the week, I asked myself, what would it take for me to feel good? And so this morning I cleaned my whole apartment and then I took a shower. I did my makeup and my hair and I got dressed up as an angel because I really need like angel energy right now. I think oftentimes in life when bad things happen to us, we ask ourselves like, why me? And we can spiral into this negative energy, but in reality, I think that the way that I've grown the most in my life is through adversity. Like when, when I have been in periods of my life where I felt really broken or like upset. And so I always try to say thank you for even the bad things that happen and be grateful for them because I'm learning how to be like a stronger, more empathetic person, you know? And so I just wanted to share that with you guys. If you guys are also going through something difficult, um, to always remember that you can tap into your angel energy. You have the power to make beautiful things from pain. And that's what I, I'm really excited about that. Like I'm excited about how strong I'm going to become. I'm not gonna go into detail about what's going on because I just feel like something I've also learned is when you're going through something difficult and you don't want that to be your narrative, it's important to speak in a way that is positive and the more you speak about the things that are going negatively in your life, the more you stay rooted in that reality. And so I think that we can talk about our pain without being uh, in detail about it. One really beautiful thing that has happened during this time of struggle for me is I have been trying to channel through my pain um, art and expressing myself. And the other day I shared on my Patreon sort of like that I was going through this struggle and uh, everyone else kind of shared their own things and I ended up writing this poem and I wanted to share it with you guys because it might resonate with you if you're also going through something difficult and it goes You will only cry tears of joy and might not understand it now But my pain and loss will be transformed into strength If I'm going through an obstacle now, it is to make me a more kind inspiring and beautiful person Every mountain I climb strengthens me Every tear I cry is water for the seeds of my dreams. I am unstoppable. I am worthy. My dreams light up the sky like stars in a desert. I am catching them all of the time. I have big faith. The fear and doubts that may appear are being ordered to leave. What is left is the best of me. I will soar so high like an eagle above the clouds. And from this place of love, trust, and freedom, I will see the miracle that is my life. I will see my tears that have filled the ocean of my heart. I will smile from way up high. I am grateful for what I see. Um, I shared this poem with a few of my subscribers who I'm pretty close to, like that kind of happens, <laughs> which is crazy. Like it's so beautiful, the internet. And they actually encouraged me to put the poem out as a print. I haven't released a print in over a year just because I've been busy with so many other things. And um, I actually, was really encouraged by that because I think it would be really beautiful to have this poem hanging up in my room. So I am putting out a print with this poem on it. Um, and the front is this line drawing that I made um, of this girl who is painting on an easel next to the ocean and she's crying, <laughs> but it's like happy tears and she's next to this shell. It's from a short film that I made and I've never put out a print like that before. Um, but I just really feel called to do it because maybe some of you guys are also going through struggles as well in your life right now and it could be encouraging to you. So I will put a link down below to the pre-order for that. Um, that's how I'm doing my prints now is I'm doing pre-orders so that way I know how many people are ordering them. And um, so I'm opening up the pre-orders for two weeks. Um, so yeah, if you do wanna get a print, support what I'm doing and also maybe be uplifted yourself, um, you can do that by following the link down below. Um, I 
after I wrote this, I was like, wow, like maybe you're going through pain right now because what you're learning through this is gonna be helpful to other people and make you a stronger person. And that idea just like makes me feel so like proud and happy to be alive. <laughs> so anyway, I'm in my angel energy. Everything's gonna be fine. And I actually have another, and I actually had another video plan to share with you guys this week. Um, I, <laughs> right before all of this happened, I filmed a video one night at home um, talking about how when you get rejection in life, when you receive a no, um, we should be thankful for even when things don't go wrong. And it's so funny because I filmed that and then all of this happened the next day. And I'm able to look at that footage now and be encouraged by the wisdom of my past self. Um, so I'm going to roll that video now. I just wanted to come on here and like update you guys and say like I've been personally having a difficult time at the moment, but through our pain comes strength and beauty and I'm gonna be okay because I decided that I'm gonna be an angel today. I'm gonna be a happy angel. I'm gonna be the happiest angel that ever fucking lived. And I'm powerful and unstoppable. Anyway, for all of you guys also experience things right now, I'm thinking of you, I love you, and I hope that you guys enjoy the rest of the video. Did you ever want something really badly in your life? You didn't get the thing, and then like six months later, you look back and you were like, oh my God, I'm so glad that it didn't end up working out in my favor at the time. Like, I'm so glad that, that it was a no, because now I'm saying, thank God. <laughs> we always say thanks in life for things that we get things that we want at the end of working out but we don't often say thank you for the things that are rejections the things that are no's and i think that we should because i think gratitude is the easiest way to really connect to a higher energy source. So gratitude is the easiest way of attracting more guidance. And so I've lit the candles, the black flame candles. And I thought that I would do like a little ceremony of things that I'm grateful for that they were no's. And I wanted to film this because I thought that it might be interesting for you guys to do as well. Hold on, I need some water. I thought that it might be a cool thing for you guys to do as well, watching this. Yeah, I always like to start rituals by lighting a candle instead of like setting the mood. And I will say in my past, there's a lot of things that I can think of. <laughs> Remember when I almost bought that apartment that had a hoarder next door? In the end, I was the one that ended up saying no, thanks to you guys. I fucking, do you remember when I filmed that video? And I was like, looking back at that video, I'm like, how did I ever think that was a good idea? It was in the 18th arrondissement and it was an apartment and it had a balcony. And at some point, like I really thought I wanted an apartment with a balcony. Now I'm really glad I don't have that because I think that having a balcony is like a really good way to end up staying inside. I say that because I don't have one and it's like an easy way for me to justify. <laughs> I mean, I kind of have them, but like not, like I'm not like bringing people out on them. Like I have like little perches, like you can open the window and like sort of go out on them a little bit. Um, and I think I, I was really disappointed when it didn't work out with that first apartment and like there was those issues. Um, but then it led me here and I, th I like literally think this space was like meant for me in some way. Um, I haven't done many videos updating on the renovation process, mostly because I haven't done anything. I've mostly let things go, to be honest. Um, I think it's really easy when you have a new project to sort of hone in on the few first few months, but I'm somebody that I, I really like to focus on things. Actually, that's something that I find really attractive in other people as well. Like, and that is very rare, I think, 
is people who are able to focus on things. For example, if you're really passionate about a certain project, um, <laughs> like if you have something that you really love and that you're like really like into, I think that's super attractive. Um, let's talk about attraction, what else? Well, there's, I was actually thinking about this today because I'm kind of an anomaly, like I don't really fall for people very easily. Um, I don't, I've always been like that. I remember when I was in kindergarten, my, I love this was like gonna be a video all about like, no's meaning the good, and I'm just talking about like my kindergarten years. Um, when I was in kindergarten, I remember like everyone had little crushes and then my mom one day took the yearbook out with my sister my older sister she's like five years older than me and they're like so who do you have a crush on at school and i was like i don't know like i never thought about that and um and then i just like picked someone randomly from the yearbook just to sort of like have something to say you know um so yeah i don't really get attracted to people like super easily i have a lot of people that like i enjoy their friendship but one thing that i always find super attractive like i said is people who can like hone in on something very specific um it doesn't even really matter what it is but paired with that like a super sense of humor like sort of like a wicked sense of humor um I read one time, I fucking, stop saying that. I hate when I do that. I always do that where I'm like, I read this. I watched a YouTube video. Let's get that clear. Um, <laughs> I saw in a YouTube video once that, um, that what makes someone like super attractive is when they have like two qualities that are very rare, like together. For example, for me, it would be like if someone is really focused on a project like if they have like a passion and then plus like a wicked sense of humor like not just like they're funny but like they have sort of like a devilish sense of humor i think those things together are very rare because when you are a really focused person a lot of times you tend to be very serious and I think that like the misconception is like success comes from being serious. I was talking about this in one of my last YouTube videos about how um, actually like a lot can come from being very lighthearted. A lot of good creative breakthroughs can come from being lighthearted and romanticizing life instead of being like serious all the time. So yeah, those two things together are like super rare and make somebody sort of like, it makes them like an anomaly, I guess. Um, and yeah, I was also thinking about this. I guess the reason why I'm talking about all of this in line with things that didn't work out is like, there were a few relationship failures this last year. I won't get into detail because I'm sort of over that phase. I know it's like sad to hear as a viewer because we all love like drama and like spilling the tea, but I'm definitely like over the phase of like talking about my relationships online and things because um, it was just like too much. <laughs> I mean, there was times when I did that where it's like, it was what I needed to do at the time. And I don't, I'm not someone that regrets anything. Like I have zero regrets, but looking back, I, I was like, shit, bitch. Like you really just like put it all out there. But again, no regrets because I know that it helped a lot of people um, who are also going through like really hard separations, specifically divorce is what I'm talking about because that is what I spilled all that tea on. But anyway, I was thinking about some of these relationship failures in regards to myself because I think that it's easy to always think like as the other person when in reality like the common <laughs> the common denominator is ourselves and we create our own reality. Like I like to say that I'm responsible for everything that happens in my own life because um, it's empowering to say that. It's empowering to. I love living where I live, but I'm also like on a main road. So like every time I, um, I'm close to a hospital as well. So every time a siren passes, I'm like, okay, I better stop. Um, what was I saying? It's empowering to say that I am responsible for everything in my own life because I think we are kind of taught to always place the blame on others out of fear of, out of fear of being ostracized. Uh, but there were also things that didn't work out where at the time I was disappointed and now I'm like, oh my god, you dumb bitch. And not like in a mean way, 
but just like a what were you thinking way you know what i mean i like call myself a bitch in sort of like a nice way do you know what i mean um i think like actually my relationship with profanity is quite fun i think pe some people get shocked by it but um my relationship to profanity i think like growing up with like my siblings it was always used in like a funny way so like me and my sister would call each other bitch or like but it was never mean so i do the same thing to myself i don't know if any of you can relate to that um so yeah i i would also oftentimes be like now what were you thinking like i'm so grateful that that certain thing didn't work out because like obviously this was like not the right thing but i think in the moment especially today like we're so desirous of like human connection that even if it's the wrong thing sometimes we will want it to work out just because it's like there you know what i mean um so i was just thinking about that tonight and i wanted to say thanks to my guides um i don't think i've ever shared this online but i when i meditate i might try to meditate every day i haven't really been doing it when, what happens is when i get busy i don't do it as much because i'm like i literally just like it's like a long thing and um so i'll try to do it in other ways like for example right now i'm preparing for my live show and so i'm like well that's sort of a meditation in a sense because when i'm playing the piano or playing music it's like very meditative um but yeah i like to think that i have spirit guides and i like to i don't even want to say this out loud it's so cringy but i like to think that like dead famous musicians are my spirit guides like i have a few that are like in particular i don't want to say it because i don't know it feels personal <laughs> but i mean if they're dead why not why not be my guide you know like you guys aren't busy right i mean maybe you guys are having jam sessions up there but if you have free time just be my guide you know what i mean <laughs> um and i'll talk to them sometimes and i'll be like just give me a sign make things easy and i often say thank you for like big wins and so i i guess i just want to say thank you for all the no's you know so what are some things in your life right now that you can think of in the last six months that were rejections that were no's that were quote unquote failures in your eyes what were they um and has your idea around that changed now now that it's been a few months later. Um, I think that for a lot of you, you're gonna look back at that and be like, oh, actually, it was for the best. You know what I mean? And that actually gives a lot of hope for the future and the present because it makes you realize that whatever you're presently going through, if there's something that feels like a disappointment, then maybe it's for a reason. I like to think that everything is happening for me, not against me, you know what I mean? And it's also exciting, isn't it? Like, it's exciting. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so happy that you said no, thank you. Um, like, thank you. It's exciting because it means that we recognize that we don't have it all figured out, but we are grateful for the guidance. I was listening to this podcast recently with this medium and she said that you have to ask for guidance, you have to ask for signs and um, and that like our, the spirits that have left us are like watching us kind of almost like through Zoom screens. Actually, I was listening to this podcast late at night and to be honest, I had to turn it off because it was kind of scaring me. I actually got like this tightness in my chest, like I think I think that I, I was born with like a really pure soul in the sense of like, I, when I was like a little kid, even up until like a teenager. So my first apartment was with my sister when I was 18, like we both moved out and got our own apartment together. And we were far enough in age that like, we had five years difference. So like, say I'm 18 and she's, <laughs> bitch is still counting on her fingers she's like 23 like we were close in age but like not close enough where we could really relate to each other on like a ton of things i don't know i was also like a really late bloomer in a lot of ways so i think that like it i just in my like mid 20s late 20s started to like really 
build like a better closer relationship with her but like when we were younger like there was a far enough difference that we didn't necessarily like hang out all the time um but when we lived together we had a lot of fun like we were so fucking poor like we were living on food stamps we had like a dead cat in our wall like there's like so many stories the neighbor's cat got inside the wall but anyway I don't know, like I was born with such like a pure heart and it sounds like I'm complimenting myself so much but what I mean by that is like a very like not naive but like a innocence I guess and like wanting to help people and <laughs> I remember like when we first moved in together there's this homeless guy downtown and like I met him and he was like making his flowers out of palmetto branches and um, I was like well do you want to like come over and like shave and I'll make you a peanut butter sandwich? And my sister came home and there was like this homeless guy on the couch. And she was like, why should you can't just bring homeless people home, Shayna? And I remember like, I remember like a few, like I really trusted this homeless guy. And then like a few weeks later, like I would like help him. And then a few weeks later he came to the door and he's like, can you give me money? And cause I need to like, wash my clothes and I'll, we were like well we won't give you money because we didn't want them to use it on drugs or anything but we can wash your clothes here and then it became like this whole drama and i remember my sister sticking up for me and because i started crying and my sister was like to the homeless guy she was like my sister has like helped you so much like don't make her cry and i remember like being really appreciative of my sister for sticking up for me for that but anyway all this to say um that like i've always had like a really innocent heart in the sense of yeah, just um, wanting to help people and then also like being very vulnerable and like open and raw. But like as you get older, I think you can become jaded and you can become, especially like around friendships. Oh my God, there's been so many friendship heartbreaks in my life. I think like I just have to always remind myself like that is a blessing to be like that. Like that's a good thing to be like that. and to always remind yourself if you're also like that and you have, you're have you like soft hearted to cultivate that and you don't have to put up walls and it's okay I think in life to be disappointed by people and I think it's okay to be like, oh man, like I wish this thing would work out but also remember that you're so loved and you're so guided and you're put on earth for a reason. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna end the video here. I think I'm really tired. Um, Anyway, thank you guys for watching. This is kind of like a chill night. I'm not used to like filming at night. This is like a little night episode. Yeah, I guess by the time this video goes out, I would have already done my concert. So I'm excited to, to see how that goes. <laughs> I'm actually really excited for that. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope that you guys enjoyed this little night session. This like impromptu video. I recently put out a song called Fun Thought World. So go listen to that if you, you know, like to support what I'm doing and um, want to see me thrive as an artist and yeah i'm excited for what's to come i believe that everything's gonna work out for the best and divine timing and i love you so much and i'm wishing you a beautiful night let's blow out this candle together and oh my god i look so like a witch like with the candle this is kind of epic a uh, candle light let us make a wish together i wish for you to be grateful for all the no's because you're opening up the doors for all the yeses. I love you. Bye. Oh, I almost got my sleeve on fire. <laughs>